Hey GED students, um, I had a college student, Charlene, send me this. She's a GED graduate, but she's taking a look at these systems of equations. So um, these types of word problems can show up on the GED and then they also show up in college. Now when they show up on the GED, they're usually multiple choice, meaning we can use a little cheat method, but when they show up in college, they could be multiple choice or they could be like this with no answers, in which case we need to use algebra. So I'm going to work it both ways. First, we'll do it algebraically, and then after that, we'll use my little cheat method of working backwards, and um, we'll see how to do these problems two ways. Here we go. So it says, Janice purchased two computers for her business, a desktop and a laptop. The sticker price of the laptop was $300 more than the price of the desktop. Janice financed the desktop with an interest rate of 6% per year and finance, financed the laptop at an interest rate of 7% per year. Her total finance charges for a year were $398. How much or what was the sticker price of each computer? All right. So first of all, first question, what are they asking me to do or to find? Well, you can see right here, question is, what was the sticker price? of each computer. So basically, I have two things I don't know. That's what makes me say, oh, system of equations times. There's two unknowns, there's two things I don't know. That means I'll probably end up with two variables and two equations. So two unknowns, you need two variables. Those are letters two equations. So let's establish our variables first. Look at what you're finding. It says, what was the sticker price of each computer? Well, I'm finding the sticker price of uh, two computers. What two computers did she get? Let's see, it says she purchased two computers for her business. Oh, here we go, a desktop and a laptop. So those are my two unknowns. How much did the desktop cost? Let's use a letter for that. How about D because of desktop? Okay, so from here on out, every time I use a D, it's going to stand for the cost of the desktop. And then I need another variable for my other unknown. The other thing I don't know is uh, the cost of the laptop. How about I use L for the cost of the laptop? Okay, two unknowns, two variables. Well, guess what? If you have two variables, you need two equations, two relationships. So let's go looking for a relationship here. A relationship of equality. So here's one. Take a look at this. It says the sticker price of the laptop, so the cost of the laptop, was 300 more than the price of the desktop. Right there, that's a relationship of equality. We could write a sentence out of that. The sticker price of the laptop. So the laptop was, it was equal to 300 more than the desktop. So the desktop plus $300 more. There's one equation, the cost of the laptop is equal to the desktop plus $300. I see a second relationship. Uh, second relationship is a little more confusing. It says Janice financed the desktop with an interest rate of 6% per year and financed the laptop at an interest rate of 7% per year. Her total finance charges for a year were $398. So basically the second relationship that I have is the relationship um, between knowing how much her total finance charges are and finding out how much her total finance charges are mathematically. So basically, I want to talk about her finance charges two ways. So here's one way, the easy way, $398. But how about by writing a mathematical expression? Like, how would I find the total interest rate if I didn't know it? Well, here's what I would do. It says that she financed the desktop at a rate of 6% per year. What does that mean? That means she, if you do it at a rate of 6% per year, that means you take 6% of the cost of the desktop. Now you might say, well, that's confusing. How do I do that in math? Well, the first thing we need to do or should do is convert a percent in, into, into either a decimal or a fraction. Most students prefer decimals, so I'll do decimals. 6% means the same as 6 per 100 or divided by 100. So 6 divided by 100 is 0 0.06. And if you know that lovely trick of moving your decimal two places to the right to divide quickly, that's great. And the word of means multiply. So we're supposed to be timesing 
uh, by the price of the desktop. Well, we said the cost of the desktop is an unknown, so we're going to let that letter D stand in for that. Okay. So how do I find 6% of the de desktop? Well, I would take 0 0.06 times D. Uh, but that's not the only finance charge she pays. She also has to pay, so plus, a finance charge on the laptop. What did it say about that? It said she financed the laptop at an interest rate of 7% per year. So what does that mean? That means that she has to pay 7% of the laptop charge every year in finance charges. So 7%, so again, 7% uh, means 7 divided by 100 or 0 0.07 times the laptop this time. It's of the laptop, so it'll be times L. So that's plus 0 0.07 L. Great. Now I have two equations, which is what I need because I had two unknowns, okay? So two equations, two unknowns. Now, last video that we did, we did a similar video to this, but I said to you, when you have systems of equations, so more than one equation using the same variables, we have choices. There are different ways to solve systems of equations. There's actually more than this, but these are the three common ways that teachers teach. They teach graphing, but since I don't have a graphing calculator on the GED, that's not my favorite way substitution or elimination. And you might say, well, which is the best way? And I always say, depends on what I'm looking at. Today, elimination, spelling's hard, sorry. Today, I'm gonna to use substitution. The reason that I wanna use substitution is because in one of my equations, I have a letter alone. Whenever I have a letter alone, substitution is an easy way to go. Because basically what I'm saying when I have a letter alone on one side of the equal sign is that one way to say L is by calling it L, but another way to say L is by calling it D plus 300. So I can substitute in this information into the other equation. Every time I see the letter L, I can substitute in the other value, D plus 300. So that's what I'm going to do. In this other equation, I do, do see an L. So I'm going to rewrite this equation this equation right there, but I'm going to substitute. Instead of writing L, I'm going to write that equivalent expression, D plus 300. Let's give it a try. So I'm not going to change anything else. My 0.06D will stay the same. My plus 0.07 will stay the same. But what's going to get become different is my L. I'm going to substitute it out. I'm going to do a swap. Instead of seeing L, you're going to see D plus 300. And notice how I plugged it in with parentheses very good habit. And now I have that's equal to 398. And why? Because that uh, number is multiplying by everything else. Now, why did I do this? The point whenever you're doing systems of equations here is to get this equation totally into one letter. And you can see I have that now. The only letter I have now is D's. I don't have any L's anymore. So even though this looks kind of gross, I can now use this equation to solve for D. So let's do that. Okay, first step when solving equations is to do any simplifying you know how to do, and I see some simplifying. I know how to multiply. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm not going to do anything with the 0.06D because it's not part of the multiplying, but I will distribute or multiply with that 0.07. So 0.07 times D is just positive 0.07D. That's easy. Now 300 times 7 hundredths, or 0.07, is 21, so that'll be plus 21, and that whole thing is still equal to 398. Now, I'm not quite done simplifying yet. There's still more simplifying I can do. I see some like terms I can combine. Those are both Ds, so they can combine. 0 0.06 plus 0 0.07 is 0 0.13, and what was I adding and subtracting? Ds, so it'll be 0 0.0 or 0 0.13 D, so 13 hundredths of a D, plus 21 is equal to 398. Great. Now I finished simplifying. I did as much simplifying as I could. It's time to start solving, working to get that D by itself. Let me get myself some space. And you'd be like, man, solving systems of equations takes work, Kate. Yep, it does. That's why a lot of students hate it. Let me just copy this down since I didn't have enough space. Sorry. Okay, so now I'm going to work to isolate D, get D all by itself. I'm solving. 
So remember when you start solving, when you start moving things from one side of the equal sign to the other, you actually work the order of operations backwards. So I'm going to take anything that's adding or subtracting first, and let's see what my new equation will be. Adding and subtracting 21 are opposites, they cancel. All I have left on the left-hand side is 13 hundredths of D, and that's going to be equal to whatever I get on the right-hand side. So 398 minus 21 gives me 377 almost done but I need to get rid of that 0 0.13 now it's multiplying with D so I'll do the opposite I will divide by 0 0.13 I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides and let's see what my new equation will be on this side multiplying and dividing by D or by 0 0.13 sorry are opposite so they cancel D's alone just like I wanted and on this side I should get a big old number 377 divided by 0 0.13 oh my land no wonder she had to finance this computer that's ridiculous I don't know what kind of fancy computer mm, Janice must be into like video production or audio production or something because that is an expensive computer okay so I see a desktop that's why I use the letter D so I would know the desktop is two thousand nine hundred dollars now you might say well how am I supposed to find the laptop go back to the simplest relationship you had and just go plug in what you know so there was the simplest relationship I knew that the laptop was the price of the desktop plus three hundred dollars so if I want to find the laptop all I need to do to find the laptop is take that price of the desktop twenty nine hundred dollars and add on the three hundred and of course that would then give me thirty two hundred dollars so the desktop is twenty nine hundred dollars and the laptop is thirty two hundred dollars so I know a bunch of you are mad at me right now like Kate that was really hard that was a really challenging skill and what I have to say is first of all Yes, the skill is challenging. It's basically using the language of algebra very fluently. You do need to build up to this level for college math. I'm sorry, that's the reality Charlene is facing right now. Um, and once you're good at the language like I am, it's not hard at all. You, you know, you're used to it. But when you're getting used to it, yes, it's very challenging. But for your GED, you can cheat. So let's go ahead and look at that lovely cheat method. So this cheat method I'm talking about, well, you guys, honestly, it's not really cheating. It's just using common sense. But one thing you can do is use the answers to work backwards. We can do what's called guessing and checking. And that way we will be calling on our arithmetic skills instead of our algebra skills. You know, algebra is just the ability to move backwards. So if we can turn this problem into a forwards facing problem, you know, uh, where we know the information and we're looking for the answer as we think of it, uh, it's going to be much more straightforward. So uh, let's go ahead and see... Uh, and kind of just test these. Uh, again, you're going to use the same statements you used before, but this time it, it's not unknown numbers. You actually have numbers to plug in and test with. So let me show you what I mean. First thing, it says the sticker price of the laptop was 300 more than the price of the desktop. The laptop was 300 more than the price of the desktop. Right away, I can cross off any situation where that's not true. Well, like look here. Here, the laptop is not $300 more than the desktop. Here, the laptop is, tap is actually $300 less than the desktop. This is a silly answer. I can rule it out right from the start. There's another one like that. You know, this one, um, let's see. The laptop is $300 more than the desktop. This looks good. The laptop is more. Uh, this one, same thing. Laptop is $300 more than the desktop. But then look at this one. The laptop is actually $300 less than the desktop another silly answer and without doing much math at all I've already got a 50 50 shot of getting this right okay so that was the first relationship I wanted to make sure that we had a case where the price of the laptop was 300 more than the price of the desktop but that's not the only relationship we know we know another uh, relationship with the interest rate so let's take a look at that one Okay, the thing we know about the interest rate is that he financed the desktop at 6% per year and, and he financed the laptop at 7% per year. And it was supposed to be that those, those uh, finance charges came to $398. So let's take a look at those finance charges. Okay, so let's try it with this one first. Okay. So let's see, the desktop, it says the desktop was 6% per year. That means he would pay 0.6 or 6% of 
$2,900. We still need those present conversion skills, but this time instead of multiplying it by an unknown, I have a known to try it with. And, and 7% he's supposed to pay on the laptop. And here we're saying the laptop cost would be $3,200. So we can actually just do the math and see if that gives us 398 like we'd expect. Now, we've already done this problem, so we know this is the right answer, but let's just make sure. 0 0.06, or 6 hundredths, times 2,900, plus a 7 hundredths, times 3,200. And that gives us $398, just like we'd expect, since we already know that's the right answer. But let's take a look at the other case, in the case of C. If I took 0.06% of the cost of the desktop this time, and, sorry, I said 0.06%. I'm sorry, I need to say one or the other. If I took 6% of 2,700, which is the same as 0 0.06 times 2,700, plus 7%, or 0 0.07, of, let's see, how much was the laptop? Laptop was 3,000 on this one. Again, I'm just looking at these numbers, you guys. Let's see what that would give us. 0 0.06 times 2,700. Hear my calculator clicking? No mathematician in his right mind multiplies and divides decimals by hands unless they're easy ones. We have more important things to do. And I get $372. Close, but that's not the $398 finance charge we were looking for. And so we can truly see that A is correct because whether you think of it algebraically or you do it with arithmetic like we just did, it fulfills both of those relationships. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.